In this video, I'm gonna to explain to you exactly how to properly backtest and optimize on MetaTrader 5 or MT5. This is gonna be a complete tutorial from A to Z, beginner to advanced, and I'm gonna explain some really, really powerful stuff about the MT5 strategy tester that I haven't heard anybody else on YouTube talking about. So if you're looking to increase the performance of your algorithmic trading, then I promise this video is going to be a breakthrough for you. And the reason you should listen to me on this topic is because I've spent the last six years of my life specifically trading with algorithms on the MetaTrader 5 platform. We also have one of the most successful algorithmic trading groups on the internet. And quite frankly, I've hired two different guys that have like 20 years worth of backtesting and optimization experience that work full time on our team. And so I've learned a lot of really cool stuff from these two guys that you can't really get unless you have years and years of experience. So just to lay the groundwork, first things first, what actually is backtesting and optimization? Backtesting is simply using your trading robot, your expert advisor, or your trading algorithm to simply test it over historical data to see how well your trading strategy performed over historical data. Now, there are inherent limits with backtesting, and just because a strategy performed well in a backtest doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to trade well out of sample or in the live market. We're gonna talk about a few things that you can do to help your results in the backtest match up with the results in the live forward tested market. And secondly, what is optimization? So optimization is just taking all of the different little parameters or different inputs that you have in your trading robot and fine tuning them and optimizing them to basically find the best parameters or a range of the best parameters that's likely to give you the best results. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty, one of the most important things that's going to allow you to speed up this entire process and get better results is the rig that you're actually doing these testings on. So if you have a really uh, high powered uh, Windows computer, then you may be able to do this on your actual device. If that's not the case, then you're going to want to get a VPS. And I like a couple companies that I'm not affiliated with, but Hyonix is one of them. And the main thing that we're looking for is the cores here. Basically, the more cores that you have, then the faster you're gonna be able to run these tests, the more data you're going to be able to collect, and ultimately, the faster your optimization process is going to be. So you can see you can go all the way up to a 32 core VPS, which is gonna cost you $192 per month. I think a good place to start is probably with an eight core VPS, which is only $48 per month. There's another company called spacehosting.net that also has some pretty good options here. You can see you can get a 16 core VPS for only 49.99 euros, or if you do it yearly, you can get it for an even better price. Okay, so next, after you have a somewhat high powered rig that you're gonna be testing on, the next thing you need to do is actually load your EA. So you probably know how to do this, but if you don't, file, open data folder, you come to MQL5, you come to experts, advisors, and then you're just simply going to copy and paste your expert advisor into this field. Now, let's go ahead and talk about this MetaTrader 5 strategy tester, which is really quite a powerful tool that a lot of platforms don't have. So with that being said, in order to pull up the strategy tester, you simply log into your account on the MT5 platform, go to view, and then you're gonna simply click on strategy tester, and you're gonna get something that opens like this where you'll have the option to either run a single back test or be able to uh, visualize a back test or do a genetic or complete optimization, which in this case, I'm gonna do a genetic optimization. So as far as your settings go, you're gonna first click and select the expert that you'd like to test with. In this case, this is Titan X. You're also going to select your symbol. In this case, it's gold. You're going to select the time frame here and then just for the purposes of this video, I've gone ahead and just done a three month back test period here. Obviously you may want to do a longer period, but just to uh, speed up the process, I've gone ahead and I've actually just done three months, but you can select your period here. Now you also have the option to forward test, which means that say for example, I'm doing a three months test and I wanted to do half of the test in back test environment and then the other half in a forward test environment. And we'll talk about why this is important later on and other ways that you can do this. You could go ahead and say half and that would mean essentially for the first month and a half, it would be a back test and the second month and a half, it would actually be a forward test, which can be powerful in certain scenarios. But I'm gonna go ahead and leave this uh, here for now. And then for delays, this is essentially execution delays. So you can go ahead and put in random delay or you can put in whatever delay that you want to. I'm just gonna go ahead and do a random delay. 
Now, the next thing here is the modeling. Now, this is really, really important. There's different sort of modeling. And what this means is the modeling is how the candles are actually forming. So when I back test, I always like to do every tick based on real ticks. And what this means is it's essentially the most dense data. This is the data that uh, basically is exactly how the market moves. So each tick in the market is exactly how this candle was formed. And that's what we're gonna be testing on. Now, this is also gonna be the most computational heavy, and this is also gonna be the slowest way to do it, but it will be the most accurate, okay? Other ways that you could do it is you could do every tick, which basically is every little you know, uh, tick that the, that the candle moves as it forms, but it's not based on real ticks. It's just kind of a, a simulation of how that the, the MT5 thinks that that candle could have possibly been formed, okay? There's also the one minute OHLC, which is the open high, uh, low, and the close price, which is basically taking a one minute candle, and it's basically just uh, testing it over those different variables, the open uh, high, the low, and the close. There's open prices only, which is going to be uh, even faster. Open prices only is essentially, you know, only taking each candle at the open price. So it's not as thorough, obviously, but uh, it is another way that you can do it if you're just optimizing for speed. And then later on, you wanna come and use every tick based on real ticks or every tick. And then there is math calculations. And basically what math calculations does is it kind of just takes the open and close of each candle and it's not quite as accurate but again this is if you're really optimizing for uh, speed and you want a faster way to do this so again i use every tick bakes on real ticks uh that's up to you how you want to do it you put in your deposit amount which in this case i put a hundred thousand dollars you put in your leverage right here and then when it comes to optimization there's a few different ways that you can go about this so uh in terms of optimization the slow complete algorithm uh, this is going to be the slowest way to do this. And basically what it's going to do is it's going to take your expert advisor and you're going to say, these are all the parameters or inputs that I want to test. And it's going to test every single possible option. So this is going to be the most thorough optimization, but it's also going to take you a lot of time. The second way, which I generally do, is the fast genetic based algorithm. And essentially what this is going to do is it's going to take your inputs and it's essentially going to look for winning inputs and then it's basically going to breed which other um, inputs we should test based on this winning input. So if you think about it in terms of like uh, Darwinism and, and genetics, you know, uh, they're basically looking for what are the strongest genes and then let's have these two mate and try to make even stronger. And so that's essentially what the fast genetic based algorithm is doing. It's trying to find winning parameters and then it's basically offspringing those parameters to try to find other more important uh, uh, combinations. So generally I'll do this. Uh, you can also do all symbols selected in the market watch, which is, you know, obviously all of the pairs that you have in the market watches are all the assets that you have. It's going to test all those. So that's again going to be a very long, tedious process. Now, I know I'm going really thorough because there's not a lot of people that are going uh, this thorough that I've seen on YouTube. So I wanna make sure that this is the best tutorial out there on how to use the strategy tester and back test and optimize properly. And if you think so, please like and subscribe to the channel. With that being said, there's also different ways that we can optimize. So these are different things that we can optimize for. So the balance max, which would be optimize for which strategy has the highest balance or optimize for the profit factor or optimize for the uh, minimum drawdown or optimize for the best sharp ratio. And I'm gonna explain each one of these in just a second after I show you the results. But generally what I like to do is actually the complex criterion max. And essentially what this is, is it's a custom scoring algorithm that kind of takes all of these different things into account and uh, is, in my opinion, this is the best way to do it. But it depends on what your goal ultimately is. If it's to have really, really low drawdown, then you may wanna try uh, draw down minimum. Okay. So that's the settings. Now, when it comes to the inputs, so here you're going to see all of the inputs of your expert advisor, and you're going to see something which is called the value, the start step and the stop. So it's important to understand that essentially what the value is, is this is the kind of the default input that you have selected. Now, the start is the start range of what you would like to test. In this case, 
In this scenario, I'm uh, testing the uh, lot size amount, okay? So basically, uh, the starting lot size amount, okay? And I'm saying that I want it to start at 0.05, and I'm saying that I want it to stop testing at the end of the range, which is 0.5, and I'm saying that I want to step it by 0.1. So what does that step it mean? That means that first I'm gonna start the lowest in the range, which is 0.015, I'm gonna step by 0.1, so that means the second thing I'm gonna test is 0.15, then I'm gonna test 0.25, then 0.35, then 0.45, all the way up till the end of this range. And that's going to give me six total steps. I'm also going to go in here and select other inputs. Now again, this is up for you to decide what inputs you're going to select. I've just gone ahead and done three inputs and the way that you select them, by the way, this is not clear, you just select it by selecting this here and the check mark marks will uh, show up here. So I'm just also testing the moving average is mostly to just try to get some sort of fast result for you guys, okay? Again, I'm starting moving average two at essentially 75. I'm stepping by 10 and I'm stopping at 140. So it's gonna test between 75 and 140 in intervals of 10, which is going to give me seven, okay? Basically, these are the different things that I'm going to test. That should give me uh, essentially 294 different optimizations that it's going to run a test for, okay? All you do after that is you go ahead and you click start. And again, depending on your rig and depending upon how many op uh, inputs that you've tested there, it's gonna take you uh, a certain period of time. Depends again on these different variables. And then again, I haven't tested a ton of stuff, but I have my results here. I can just go to optimization results you can right click and you can filter and you could say, I wanna filter out any strategies that didn't take any trades or any strategies that are losing uh, strategies or you can filter by, you know, if the drawdown's greater than 50% or anything else that you'd like to filter by. Now, we're gonna see all this data, but what does it all mean? Because this is really important when making your decision and I found out that most people don't know what profit factor is or expected payoff or sharp ratio or recovery factor. So let's go ahead and let's talk about what these actually mean. And then we'll talk about how to actually choose the best inputs that's likely to give you the best results. So the first thing here is you can see the expected payout and essentially what the expected payout and how it's calculated is it's taking the total net profit, okay? And then it's dividing it by the total number of trades. So essentially what the expected payoff is, is how much money are you expected to make per trade? And you can see here, I'm expected to make maybe $30 per trade. This is the expected payout per every trade that I put on, taking all winners and losers. The next thing that we're gonna take a look at is the profit factor. And the way that the profit factor is calculated is it's basically the sum of all of your winning trades divided by the sum of all of your losing trades. And this is just another way to take a look at what the potential profitability of a system could be. The next thing is the recovery factor. And the recovery factor is calculated by taking whatever the net profit is during this back test and dividing it by the max drawdown. So just to give you an example, let's say that we have $10,000 in net profit and $2,000 was our max drawdown. We'd take $10,000, divide it by $2,000, and we'd have a recovery factor of five. And the last thing that we're gonna take a look at here is the sharp ratio. And this is maybe the most confusing, but the way that the sharp ratio is calculated, and uh, you'll see this being mentioned a lot in uh, hedge funds and sophisticated investing and trading. And the sharp ratio is basically a uh, scoring system to give you an idea of what is the return in comparison to the risk, which is a really important number. Now to calculate the sharp ratio, the way that you do it is you take the return of a trading system minus the risk-free return, which is gonna give us what's called the excess return. And generally the risk-free return will be something like, you know, say 5% for um, US treasuries, like something that's generally considered a no or very, very, very tiny amount of risk. So this is, gives us our excess return, which is what we need first, which is again, the return of the system minus basically the opportunity cost of you know, putting your money into something that's nearly risk-free. And then we divide that by the risk or the volatility of the trading system. So for a really simple example, the way that this would be 
calculated is take the, for example, a trading system that does 2% monthly return. And let's say that there is a, the, the risk-free return is zero. Let's say we're not including a risk-free return. That would basically mean our excess return is 2%. And then our risk or our volatility, let's say in this case is a 1.5% standard deviation. That means we'd simply divide 2% by the risk or the volatility, which is 1.5% which would give us a sharp ratio of 1.33. And in other words, essentially what that means for every unit of risk taken, the strategy returns about 1.33 units of excess return. So generally in the investing world, anything over one is considered good, anything over two is considered very good, and anything over three is, is considered excellent risk adjusted return or an excellent sharp ratio. So I know that's a little bit complex, but I wanted to give you the background there so you had an idea of what this actually means. It's basically the risk adjusted return and the higher the number, the better, okay? And before I show you how to analyze these results and how to avoid curve fitting, which is one of the biggest problems with algorithmic trading, there's two big problems that face traders today, right? Number one is not having a proven trading edge. And number two, not having enough trading capital to actually trade with. And we've solved both of these problems and can actually guarantee that we'll help you get funded $100,000 worth of trading capital using our AI prop farming system that actually changes and improves with market conditions. And as a matter of fact, we've helped over 750 people become funded algorithmic traders via prop firms. So if you'd like to see the demo of exactly how this works and how we can help guarantee your success, go to www.propfarming.com. So lastly, what do we do to actually analyze this data and to make decisions about which inputs or optimization uh, would actually yield the best results? So one of the big problems with backtesting and optimization is curve fitting. And curve fitting means that the parameters are so tightly wound to historical data and it does really, really great in a back test. But then because it's so tightly wound, when the market changes, uh, essentially the strategy doesn't perform as well when you take it out of this historical data. So there's a few things that you could do. And one of the things that you can do is actually take a look at the graph and analyze it. So you can right click here and you can look at different graphs. You can see like a one, uh, uh, a one D graph, a two D graph, and then a three D graph. I like to look at this three D graph. And essentially, what we can do is we can put what parameters we want uh, from our test on either the X and the Y axis, and then the Z axis is going to be whatever we optimized for. Which remember, we did this complex criteria, which was uh, what we were optimizing for. So the higher and more green these bars are, the more, the better it performed essentially. So if I take a look here, I can see that, you know, maybe this was the highest one in the entire entire back test, which was basically around like a 95 uh, uh, moving average for the for number three and like uh, for moving average number three and moving the average number two was like around like an 86 or so. And this was what resulted in the best result. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that we want to go with just the best result. We want to look for um, situations where we're gonna have a robust trading strategy. And so uh, maybe we wanna look for something that's more closely over here because you can see that if we change the parameters by a little bit, we still wanna have success, okay? And you can see kind of this area tends to have like a, a, a little bit more success. So maybe I'd wanna play a little bit more over here as my parameter. So the last thing that you could do to avoid curve fitting is to go in here and you can go ahead and you can right click on a result that you like. And again, I'm looking for uh, sort of a range. I'm not looking for what necessarily is the exact best parameter, but where, where's the best kind of range? But I could go in here and say, I wanna use this uh, strategy here. Then I can go in here and I can run an actual single test. And what you could do when you run a single test is run it over a different period. So if I tested for the past three months, maybe I wanna run this strategy over the course of six months, okay? And this will give me an idea of how robust this strategy is because now I'm testing it out of sample, okay? And ultimately the best way to overcome curve fitting is to actually break it out of the box and try it in the live market scenario, which is what we do with our prop farming system is we don't only just do optimization. Here we have two full-time guys that are constantly optimizing and changing our algorithm as the market changes, but we're also testing it in the live market. So that way our community is testing 
testing strategies and using strategies that worked both in a back test as well as the forward market. So hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, please like, subscribe. And if I missed anything else, let me know in the comments below. Or if you have any other questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them in the comments below.